All right, everyone. Here we are with ticker symbol HYLN, Helion Holdings Corp., also known as previously before the merger, SHLL, Tortoise Acquisition, Inc. And before we jump in, I want to say welcome to all my first-time viewers and investors. Welcome to my channel, Invest for Tomorrow. To all my subscribers, welcome back, and let's jump into this chart. So, obviously, we broke through support, and now we're in bearish territory again after this slight sideways recovery and movement and slightly broke through the 50 day moving average and quickly fell right back below it and right now we're at 30.10 and the 50 day moving average is slightly above it at 30.43 so right now the bearish run right because this was a pretty steep one after hitting these highs of where it was at previously all the way up at 58 dollars and some change the volatility hit lows here of 33. I had stated if that got broken through, this could start to test newer lows. And then obviously the peak here of the recovery before the merger at $54 and some change. And it had started to fall. In this very steep bearish run, we have seen now that it slightly has leveled off. And the question is, how much steeper will it get after this? which we have to pay very close attention to this the upcoming days and weeks and how it starts off next week or is this actually going to kind of hang out sideways and could start to have a recovery sometime in the near future attracting investors to come back in and start to rise up with it but as of right now this steep bearish run has slowly settled down due to volume settling down I mean, volume was only 5 million today. This was upwards to 20 to 50 million in volume per day and maybe even more previously to the steep fall. And even on this fall, there were some high volumes and today was 5 million. So the stock has slightly quieted down. Now, in this low volume, if it continues like that the next coming days and weeks and it continues to start to fall in a steeper direction how it did previously then this stock could be on its way down to newer lows fairly quickly within days and weeks and there is no recovery to be seen soon but if it hangs out sideways for some time with the low volume all it takes is for it to start to recover to attract investors again so all it takes is that and also some great news in regards to the company but right now this stock has actually went in a downward direction and now we're slightly in a sideways movement and the question is could the recovery come or will it continue to fall steeper or hang out sideways for the next coming days so let's look at our new support levels and resistance levels we're going to look at this pretty narrowed down and then i'll talk about it a little bit broader so lowest point that this stock has reached in the bearish run which we're going to zoom in and look at right now is right here at this point of 28 and 40 cents i'd write that down because if that gets crossed this will start to see newer lows and newer support levels now the highest point before the peak falling and leveling off is up here at 32 32 i'd write that down that gives you a sense of direction that this is actually now back in bullish territory. And if that is turned into a support, this could start to work its way up to newer highs. But let's look at this zoomed in to go ahead and see what is it showing in the last couple of hours of the day. So we're going to get this right on the T and see for ourselves. So the 50 day moving average is 3043. Super important number lets you know on what side of the chart we're in. And as of right now, we are slightly in bearish territory and the tug of war will be interesting for Monday. Okay. Now the resistance level that needs to be broken through, which is slightly above that for the bulls is 3057. This is the first resistance level in bullish territory. If that is turned into a support, the bulls can actually break away from that, pulling themselves further away from the 50 day moving average in an upward direction and start to hit newer highs and newer resistance levels so super important for the bulls to break through that and they've accomplished two things they got back into bullish territory crossing the 50-day moving average and they broke through the first resistance level getting them 
upper and further away from the 50-day moving average in an upward direction. On the other hand, we have our support. And this support level here is 29.55. This point is one of the lowest points that this reached in this steep fall. Obviously, there's another lower point in the last couple of hours here at 29.53. That's not big of a difference in a sense. But this one is the one that concerns me the most because of this steep fall being the lowest point early on in the day. And the rest of the day kind of slightly stood above it except for that one candlestick of two cent difference. So this support level, if it gets broken through at 29.55, I want to emphasize how important it is to pay very close attention to how this stock is reacting. How quickly is it moving to newer lows? Is it kind of hanging out around that area and the bulls are trying to reappear and bring this one back up? But again, the bulls won't gain control until they break through the 50 day moving average and create a support at their resistance level up here of 3057 to break away in an upward direction into bullish territory. Now, again, yes, the bulls can reappear down here and level it off. That's a good sign. And it could be momentum and start of a rally for the bulls in an upward direction. But pay very close attention to how this stock is reacting if 2955 does get crossed and who is dominating the chart. Are the bulls trying to reappear? Or are the bears just tearing this one down to hit newer lows and get closer to that lowest point that I had spoken about earlier way back here. As always, if you found this video helpful and informative, please do so and subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell to turn on all notifications to not miss a single video that I post. Share this with your friends and community. And don't forget to hit the like button and let me know you watch this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money. At the end of this video, there's going to be a pop-up video and I go into detail about the S&P 500 index and how it's been rising up several points on scheduled dates. What happens on those scheduled dates, which are the dates that I circled here on the chart and we're going to see for ourselves. Well, the S&P 500 index rises up several points and by doing so, they're bringing up several ticker symbols, not all of them, but most of them up with them. And these ticker symbols are rising up 30 cents to $3 per share. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but per share that does add up. And one thing I am really big on is profits. If you put a dollar into the market and you get out with $2, you've made profits. You've done what the whole purpose of being in the market is for to maximize profits and minimize losses. And with the Federal Reserve pumping the markets on these scheduled dates, bringing the S&P 500 index up, also brings up individual ticker symbols with them. And again, 30 cents to $3 may not sound like a lot of profit per share, but that does add up. And like I say, profits are profits. So we're gonna look here at some of the dates so that you guys can see what I talk about in the video. And it's a weekly series. I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on it. Definitely click on the video as it pops up at the end of the video and check it out. But here we are with one of the first pumps in the scheduled dates pumps. So the first one, since the last time that they had released this, they released this on September 14th and the next one's coming up on October 14th, which is like a week from now. And on the 15th, they scheduled it. And as you can see, this is the 14th and the 15th is this big green bar and it rose up. So on the 14th, we were at around 33.84 and it rose up to 3420. I mean, that's 40 points risen on the S&P 500 index. And that's creating that catalyst for individual ticker symbols to rise up 30 cents to $3. We're going to look at another one here. And the next one was on September 22nd. And here we are on the 21st after falling from that last pump and the market had been falling. And you could see that there is volatility on every single day of the market before the dates of the pumps, but on the dates of the pumps are the days that the most green happens. For the most part, not every time, but for the most part. But on the 21st, which was a Monday, it was rising up and it rose up to this point here. And the next one was the 22nd. So this is the last 21st candlestick and this is the first 22nd candlestick. And we were at 32.70. This one rose up all the way up here to this point right here this was the last 22nd 
candlestick to 33.19. I mean, if we go back, we were at 32.70, 33.19. That's almost 50 point jump here for the S&P 500 index. And again, individual ticker symbols rose up with it and it created that catalyst a little bit before the anticipation. And on that date, it rose up. Now on this next pump, which was a little bit different, there was a catalyst form beforehand and it rose up to these highs on the 28th of about 33.59. It actually dipped on the date of the next pump, which we see it here, which was on the 29th of September. And the next one was on the 6th, which just happened yesterday. And it actually slightly dipped. Now, not every time is these pumps going to rise up the market like we've seen here by a lot of points, but it still rises it back up or levels it off from hitting newer lows and leveling off the market itself. Because if we look at the previous notes that I did beforehand, it was actually rising up with it. The volatility was there, but you were able to buy, like for example, how we bought here on the 15th and it rose up. Well, it's been falling and then very volatile here up and down. Beforehand, you can buy at the beginning of the schedule pump dates and hold a couple weeks and ride out several pumps and you were going on your way up. But right now, even as the market's going down, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of the fact that the Federal Reserve is pumping the markets and there's an opportunity to make profits. So here we are on the 29th and it fell to lows of 33.28 and it rose up to these highs here of 33.49. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's still a 20 point jump after dipping and recovering. And then it continued to work its way up to newer highs. Now here on the 6th, which on the 5th, it started to rise, it leveled off. This is the last candlestick of the 5th coming up right now. And we're about to see it here. Yes, this is the last candlestick of the 5th and it rose up and all the way to the last candlestick of the 6th, it rose up another 20 points. I mean, we're down here and it ended up around here. So right now, something I'm noticing is that these pumps are creating less of an effect on the market, but it's creating that upward direction from falling to newer lows, but it's still having the market rise up. And even though the S&P 500 index is rising several points, there are individual ticker symbols rising up. Like I said, 30 cents to $3. Check out the video. I go into more detail. I don't want you guys to miss out on this great information. Click on it. And thank you guys so much for watching and let's make some money.